Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, uh, the engineering water cooler in AWS. This is episode four in our series of, uh, of shows where we're helping you understand how to migrate your workloads from SGE to Slurm, uh, most likely on AWS Parallel Cluster, but uh, these are generic These are generic classes that you could be using for, for doing these things. Uh, and of course, again, we are joined by Austin Cherian in Singapore. Hey, Austin. Hello. Evening. And Nick Eiley in Utah. Nick is the director for cloud uh, at SCEDMD, who are the who are the folks who build, maintain, and uh, and created uh, Slurm. Uh, Hi, thanks know. for having me back. Hey, Nick. Uh, all right. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Slurm accounting. That's uh, uh, if you're not into accounting, tune out now. Do your taxes another time. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, accounting accounting should be an important thing that most folks that are building and running HPC clusters should think about because it's a really good way of measuring what's getting used on the cluster and who it's getting used by. So you can even even if for no other reason than you just want to do a better job to look after your users so you know who they are and what they're doing. So over to you guys to talk about Slurm accounting for today. I think this is a really cool topic. Yep, I think for this one, uh, we go straight to Nick, but essentially the idea is that, uh, you know, Slurm accounting gives you the kind of uh, visibility on jobs and management of resourcing, especially in multi-user environments. And so it's a really important feature. And uh, for our SG users out there who've been using the accounting on SG, we're not going to give them a walkthrough on uh, the Slurm side of the world. So Nick, take it away. Great, yeah. So, you know, accounting is, like you guys were saying, an important topic. And there's actually kind of two pieces of accounting I want to talk about is to fully understand the the kind of reporting aspect of accounting. It's also important to understand um, the the setting up of the accounting and how Slurm does that, where limits and policies and really, you know, those guardrails that you need to put in for your users come into place. So we'll cover that first. So if we go ahead and um, let's uh, look at the terminal screen here in our, our demo environment that we have on uh, on Parallel Cluster. Um, I'm going to show you a command in Slurm. It's called S Account Manager, and so this is going to be a lot more of a kind of administrative look. Now we've a lot of the other sessions have been you know, how are we helping our, a lot of our users out. This is going to be more on the admin side where you're starting to set up the policies that you might have to translate over from. SGE over over to, to, to Slurm. So the S account manager command is where we're going to be able to look at what's set up in our Slurm accounting database. Um, so I'm going to show uh, do a command S account manager show a soak or association is what that's that short for. Um, associations in Slurm is really how it's doing its its accounting. So all the different kind of objects inside of Slurm are, are associated with each other. And what I mean by that is users, accounts, groups, even partitions um, have an association and then you associate policies with those as well. So let's take a look at that. We just saw a ton of output, don't have the screen real estate necessarily to show that, but just wanted to give you a quick understanding, a uh, quick look at that at that command. Let's, let's uh, make this a little bit easier to see. Um, I'm going to actually, um, set this up in a different format. So we're basically getting, in a sense, raw data from our accounting database. And so here I'm going to um, give a specific format of specific um, fields that I want to look at. And I'm going to look at it in, in, a, in our tree format. So all our users are in different accounts. And, and we're going to look at that from, from that perspective. And I want to see just my account, the user, uh, the field of priority, and this field of group trez, which I'll explain in just a minute. So we look at that, broke that down a little bit easier, made it a little bit easier to see. So here is my accounts that I have. I have a department A, department B, and department C account. And then in department A is demo one, two, and three users, and Nick, and demo one is also in department C. And then we see this group trez, which is a policy um, set up here for department B. So what this policy is, um, as a group or in a whole, any members in department B can only use a total of 32 CPUs. So it gives you an idea of kind of how you set up some of those policies um, inside of inside of Slurm. And so um, let's just go ahead and actually um, set up a new account and set up some some policies. By the way, what does what does Trez stand for? Yeah, that's a great question. Trez stands for trackable resource. Ah. 
So uh, those are things, okay. you know, CPU, memory, GPUs are trackable, licenses are trackable, and there's a number of other um, um, items inside of Storm that are uh, memory, you know, that are all part of this trackable resource that we can report on as well, which we'll, we can talk about when we get to that section. Wow, we could actually track memory pigs. Yes. <laughs> we could track the memory holes nice. on the system. Okay, you, you yep. heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so I just created an account uh, called Special. Um, now we're going to create a user inside of that account, and we're going to assign that user to account special. So as account manager, create user Nick, put Nick in account special. And yes, I want to commit that. And I, I could have done this as uh, all as part of that last line, but I wanted to do it separately just to show you how you would do this, you know, down the line a little bit. Um, I'm going to modify the account special, um, and I'm going to set that policy of group trez of CPU, so I could I could put in here GPU, I could put in here, you know, any of the memory, I could put in those different trackable resources. In this case, I'll just do CPU equals four. And now when I go ahead and we look at that, um, uh, that output, we can see that we now have this, this special account in here that Nick has access to with this, um, with the CPU equals four. So now let's see that in action. So I'm just going to go ahead and Submit a, a, a simple job here, and uh, I need to add in that account of special, and uh, it's just going to be a, a this dash dash wrap. I, I've shown this a few times in these sessions. This is where I can just pass in information that would be normally you know part of my my job script of um, the actual um, job that I'm running. Okay. So we go ahead and, and run this. We can look at um, SQ and we see the job is running and we can do a, an S control show job. And we see that it is um, running an account special. So let's do another one now. And this time we're just going to do one, one CPU, but that, with this, we should be at our limit. So if I do an SQ, we see that it is pending. It can't run because it has the uh, the reason of the association group CPU limit that, that has been hit. Right. So a pretty you know basic example of how that works, um, but it's important to understand um, when you're moving from SGE to Slurm, um, this is one of the areas, one of the main areas that you would start putting in those kind of limit, usage limit guardrail like policies. If we, um, let's uh, take this S account show a soap command again, and um, you'll just see these are all the different um, fields that are available, different policies that can be set up. We don't have time to go into, the, into these individually today, um, but just gives you an idea of what those options are. Great, great. I just like to mention over here that you know for for Paddle Cluster, the job accounting doesn't come on by default, and uh, we have a great Paddle uh, article out there that shows how to set up job accounting for Slurm. So we'll probably drop in that link uh, later as well as part of this tech chart. Yeah, well, uh, you know, customers talk to us all the time. They do like the guardrails imposed by, by things like job accounting or anything else where they can they can kind kind of impose a limit, mm -hmm. either through accounting or even meant, you know measuring it afterwards. This is a post written by a couple of our a uh, couple of our engineers, uh, Rex Chen from one of the develop, development teams, and Nicola Venuti in in Europe. These guys got together and actually wrote a blog about how to actually do all of that. I'll make sure that the link to this is actually included in the show notes and probably also pops up on the bottom of the screen in a few minutes. Yep. All right. Um, uh, that was a, so that's actually really cool. I actually, I, I got a lot out of that. Um, uh, where do the, where do the, um, where do the accounting configurations get stored, Nick, on the, on a system? Yeah. So um, the, the main recommended method is a, a, a database. So it can be a, you know, MySQL, Maria, DB, et cetera, um, that, that can be set up there. Um, and that's where all that data we, is set. We recommend don't go into that database itself and try to extract stuff there. Use the yes account command and manage command to put to input data and, and output data from the from the database from that, those associations. And then we have a couple other commands for the reporting on on job data, which which we can get into now. Great, great. Um, just before we move on, uh, I just also want to get an idea, Nick, around the users, right? So the users that we saw were there, are these uh, the users on the head node of uh, you know, Slurm scheduler or, you know, uh, are they special users? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So all these users are the users on our our our, our Linux system. So these are all you okay. know um, on the system itself, on the nodes. Um, we don't necessarily have an integration with like an LDAP system, but you can write scripts that will take your LDAP users and write them into um, the Slurm the Slurm database using that S account manager command. You've set up the database with all your users. Now we can track what what they're doing. Uh, and um, you know, get get that understanding of you know what are my jobs doing, how much time are they spending, what resources are we using, etc. Uh, for that, we have kind of two commands. First, we'll talk through the s account command. Um, the s account command is going to be looking at all of our our job information, so it's kind of individual job data. Um, right. As you saw, uh, you know, it puts out a lot of information about our jobs. So we'll we'll break this we'll break this down a lot. A lot. We've submitted a lot of jobs just in, in, in the most recent uh, couple minutes here. So we have, um, by default, these are the different fields that it shows us about about our, our, our workload. Uh, we can get more specific. Uh, let's do a, a dash dash job and give it one of our jobs. So we'll give it um, 389, so that's an easy one there. We get more specific information about that. Uh, we can do a dash L option for long. And that's going to go. That's going to give us a ton of information. Don't definitely not have the screen real estate for this, but you can see here all of those fields that that are available, and you can see that in our documentation in the man page right. for for S account, of course. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you a couple of um, outputs that we can kind of break this down a little bit. So let's look at um, let's look at a job here, um, or or an S account out, output where we're going to give it a start time. So we're going to give it a start time of, of October 13th, an end time of October 17th. And we're going to break this down and using that dash dash format. So the, the format option is where we can uh, specifically decide which fields do we want to look at. So we'll look at user, job, account, time limit, et cetera. So let's go ahead and look at that. And we see that information here. If I scroll up, uh, we had a, a bunch of jobs that got submitted and uh, during that that time period and we can go and see just those fields that we requested here um, we can go break this down further okay we wanted to look at you know let's just look at um two day period of time um during that two day period of time there were no jobs so we didn't have any jobs right. on the 16th or or 17th um now i'm doing this from my user account so i'm right. seeing only my jobs by default, okay. you can go yeah. and do a dash dash all users and um, see information from all users. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is going to you now we're seeing jobs from users demo three, um, demo two, etc. Um, one other final thing I want to show here is we can add the option of parsable. This is going to give us uh, the output and a little bit more parsable output. Um, oh, okay. One thing to note, um, in our latest release of Slurm 2108, we have a JSON output as well that's available. Nice. Um, that's great. 2108 wow. is not available in Parallel Cluster yet, but it soon soon will be. I'm sure. Yep. That's super cool. That is super cool. Um, yeah, you could do quite a lot of, you could do a lot of data mining with this. Yeah, there's, there's yep. a number of projects out there that sites take this data and then they, you know, parse it and, and then put it in a visual Form. There's a lot of different tools out there that, that sites sites use and and um, can give you that that visual um, display of, of all this data. So let me show you one other command that we have, um, which is uh, S report. So S report is more of the wrap up type of data. So we want to get a summary of what's going on in the in the environment for those kind of roll up reports. Um, so if I'm going to do a there's a kind of four types. Uh, there's your cluster reports, job reports reservation reports and and user reports. So I'll just show, and, and each one of those has a, a couple of different options. So let me just show a, a couple of, um, um, of these reports. So here is a cluster utilization report. Um, right now, you know, uh, in the last, uh, this is from uh, uh, yesterday, we have uh, 59 minutes that have been used of our total potential of you know 230,000 minutes, so um, we haven't been using much much of the system. We can okay. uh, change the time period if we want with the the start option. Um, here we're going to start look at this from the 13th. So this is going to give us the 13th through end of yesterday. 
Um, here we had um, 269 CPU minutes that were allocated. We had some that were down where the system was down um, and then this many that were, were idle. Um, we can look at job reports. So let, let's look at a job report here. And we're going to do this, um, look at it by account, size by account. And we're looking at department A. And um, instead of looking at CPU minutes, we're looking at the print job account. So we're going to see how many jobs of this size for department A were, were, were ran. Yes, uh, I guess. Yep. So maybe I we can. I got to say, that was freaking cool. Yeah, um, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just had a question like, for for Nick in general. So, um, can we restrict, um, you know, kind of like put quotas and things like that as well? I'm guessing we can, obviously. Yeah, so um, that, that is one yeah. way on, on on clouds that they use those those guardrails are right. to like you could take your quotas that you might have right. and you can put them apply them to your partitions or apply right. them to exactly. accounts or users right. to kind of help with um, yep. making sure you're not hitting quota limits and so Nick, that that actually is really awesome. I've learned a whole lot. I think did yeah, you learn yeah. something, Austin? That was really cool. Oh, for sure. And I think we we probably would continue the story, you know, much after this as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think <laughs> actually there's plenty to talk about. So look, um, yep. thank you to everybody who's watched this series. Uh, there's one more show coming, which is going to come next week, where we're going to talk about uh, the Slurm API and how you can actually submit jobs through the Slurm API into a cluster. Um, in it, that's actually pretty potent because in combination with Parallel Clusters API, you could easily have a scenario where you've got a cluster that's that's being built but turned off currently, uh, and you could have the cluster, you know, turned back on by an API call, and then you could start submitting jobs to it through API calls. Uh, yep. uh, the sky's the limit. I think there's going to be quite a quite a lot of stuff to to use our imagination with. But uh, for now, Austin, Nick. Thank you for coming. Thanks for Thank sharing you. all this with us. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Have a Thanks, good one. Thanks, Brendan. Have a good one. Do this.